Hey, we're here at part two of my build video. I hope you're uh, learning something. If not, just leave some comments below. Let me know what I'm missing that you might like to know. One of the things that I said I was going to mention this video, which when I started making it, I absolutely forgot to do it, was priming. On these HydroCal kits, it's extremely important that you prime them because they're very porous and they will absorb paint like a sponge and you will get your colors will just look absolutely hideous if you try to put them on there without priming first. So take a, take a white or a gray and make sure you prime all your parts first that way you don't get that sort of super absorption that you would get with HydroCal because it's essentially it's plaster so uh, just make sure you do that we're going to start rolling too hope you enjoy it please leave comments subscribe visit my website www.devart.net d-a-v-a-r-t.net and uh, see you on the other side bye I told you in the beginning of the last video that there was a couple things that I forgot to put in that video because well I've never made one of these videos before so don't really think about everything I need but just got another little hydrocal piece here it's from a scrap bin or a bone yard um, of the kit and I was going to tell you about joining the walls and stuff like that together it's not real hard you can trim it down with an exacto knife or sculpting tool as I showed you in the last one and then I take a sanding block just a piece of 2 by 4 with some um, sandpaper staple to it and I use I've been using this paper forever I need to change it and I'll just sand it down now yeah I will fill up the sandpaper but that's no big deal to get out you can generally just take it outside and knock it out or rinse it out with a hose and that's about it that's all I wanted to cover on that that's one of the things that I forgot another thing that I forgot let me get this out of the way was I covered it but I didn't do it right at the end was dry fitting your windows on your on your model uh, one of the things you want to do is dry fit the windows is you just put them in and generally they fit really good on these on these deco kits they fit really good but not all you know sometimes they don't you got to do a little bit of trimming trimming around them to get them to fit 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 right but generally they fit good but I've already done these put them in there a couple of them I had to do it just the, the most minimal amount of trimming on just to get them just to sit down in there nice and clean and a lot of times you can just push them in and and make them fit but I do I do those I just really pull one window out and go through and do the same one but I don't put them in until I'm nearly done and we'll get to that later I was gonna tell you about painting weather it like I said you know how to paint this is what it started out looking like is just instead of painting the whole whole model one color since this is actually going to be two buildings I paint this was the uh, the brick red that I showed you in the can the last one uh, that I have mixed up watered down I don't worry a whole lot about getting uh, you know, full coverage and this uh, side here was about a 50 50 mix of uh, Georgia clay and um, just earth brown watered watered down about about 50 percent again about half water half uh, paint but that was Georgia brown and uh, Georgia brown it's a movie isn't it uh, just earth brown and uh, Georgia clay those two mix those up that was this side here that's what it looked like since um, I haven't done these two back sides yet as far as uh, filling in I've gone ahead and started on the fronts and the sides I don't as far as uh, like uh, doing the um, the grout I don't worry a whole lot about getting nice even coverage with the grout if you want to do grout sometimes I don't even fool with it it depends on how many decals and stuff like and kind of weather it I'm going to do and what the purpose is but I went ahead and did this one it's got you know you can see it's it's uneven but that's that's fine because a lot of times these older buildings you've got lime that's leaching out of the bricks and you're not going to have an even coverage of, of grout anyway and since it's on top if you wanted to you could take a wet cloth and wipe some of it off and get rid of it but I've gone ahead and done these two sides I'll just show you real quick on the back what I do oh, grout on the back this is not rocket science none of this is rocket science uh, it's just trial error and practice I use a lot of times I just use your regular old cheap old white paint uh, depends on the sort of mood I'm in if I want something a little darker I'll use an acrylic or I'll use a goose or I'll use a uh, watercolor 
these have got a little heavier pigmentation any of these paints that you get like these these craft paints that you're going to pick up at Walmart or Hobby Store, Hobby Lobby, Michaels, wherever they're nice but they do have what they do have low pigmentation which means they got a little more water than they got pigment so you know you're not going to get good coverage all the time with one coat with these that's due, due to the low pigment level whereas you want something a little bit more pigment you're going to get so when you do washes and things on your buildings for uh, like grout and stuff you may have to do multiple coats to get the lines white and if you it depends on the number of whiteness I've gone ahead and kind of overdid this one to make it show up on the video but normally I wouldn't be quite this heavy heavy with it but that's okay it's not about me it's about you um, and this here is just some you know wall I think a couple bucks at three bucks whatever Walmart last you for a long time I'm gonna go ahead and use this on this because this is what most people are gonna have most people are used to use working with not as many people are gonna be using Gumbrocker acrylics but you ought to have you know any cheapo artist acrylic the nicer acrylic paint or oil paint or goosh or watercolor paint that you get the, the, the heavier the pigmentation you're gonna have some of these uh, there's some other ones that they make uh, Liquitex makes a, a um, an acrylic paint that's like a student gray it's not quite as heavy on the pigmentation far as uh, the pigment goes within the paint itself but it still works fine and it's a whole lot cheaper but that's the one way of doing it I'm not gonna mess with that right now go with what you got excuse my nasty work surface here I need to clean this thing off again um, I was trimming some parts for another model like I say this isn't I'll just put a little a little water on here I don't really worry about it too much put a little water on my board as dirty as it is get a little white paint and I don't worry a whole lot about no measurement just something that looks watery and I can put let me put my glasses here. good one good one Dave make a mess that's it let's knock everything over But I'll take these, it's a little thin. And I'll just put this in here. And I tend to do one, one side at a time, like on a building like this here, instead of doing both, both of them together. That way they have their own individuality of, uh, of appearance you know that way you don't get like the same pattern running across all the way across a building that's two different colors it's supposed to be two different buildings that way they look like they was built at different times or done at different times and this is all I do just water it down put it in here I mean there's a there's a hundred different techniques that you can use on this this is just something that's simple with stuff that's available to everybody and you don't have to have a a lot of experience to do this and I'll just let that dry now you go hey I can speed up the dry with a blow dryer well the thing about doing it with a blow dryer is on these on this particular technique is you're gonna blow the paint right out of the grout lines and uh, be all for naught and I don't set it up when I'm done because it all runs down to the bottom or the side unless that's the effect I'm going for but um I say just a little bit of water, a little bit of paint, no science to it. It looks like a lot, but don't worry about it. We'll get it all we'll get it all fixed up. If that brush ain't big enough, there's others that are. And this is going you know it's going to look like it's a lot darker on here than what it is but unfortunately it dries out a whole lot lighter than it looks like here and so that's why you're going to end up with multiple that need multiple coats when it's all said and done it depends like I said again it's all got to do with how, how dark 
you want your grout, how white or light you want your grout lines. I just kind of give it sort of the suggestion that they're there. I don't really worry a whole lot about having every little grout line. Some people want to, some people use, uh, you really can't use it on these, but I know some people have used uh, mud, you know, uh, spackle to fill it in. I, I don't like that myself. That's just my personal preference. I think it makes the grout lines too heavy and too too thick and doesn't look <coughs> as uh, convincing to me, I think. But like I say, this is, we're between coats, we're between, we're between layers and um, of color, so you don't get the exact look. But that's what I do on that one. I don't know if you can see that or not. I got to touch up a little bit down there. I'm trying to look at the screen to see. And I'll let that dry. And then I'll do this side here. And then this is what the sides look like. I mean, that's not, you know, this is, like I say, we're between colors now. So you're not looking at a finished product. You're looking at a piece and work. So let me let that dry. Set that down. I'm going to do this other side. I've gone ahead and painted in where the wood is at. A base color it's not going to stay that color we're going to do weathering techniques on that we do some dry bushing techniques get that a lot lighter and when this dries I get this done I may go ahead and do these may do the stone around the bottom or the tile I had to do a little work this piece had a um, I guess you would call it a molding anomaly because it's not, not normally on this particular kit but I had a little kind of little half circle shape there where it was like something wasn't quite right and I had to pack, cut a lot of this out and fix a lot of that and redo some of this stone. I didn't really worry a whole lot about getting it invisible but I did uh, fix it up to where it wasn't quite as noticeable and um, then I gone ahead and painted the uh, I can't think of their names, you know the ledges on the windows they got a name but I can't remember what it is um, and the tops uh, the, concrete. I use aged concrete, this Woodland Scenics aged age concrete. I'll be honest with you, I'm not overly impressed with this. I mean, I like the color. It's a nice color, but the, it's way too thin. It's thinner than this stuff that you get at Walmart and these, or Hobby Lobby or wherever. I think I bought these at Hobby Lobby. I think I paid 74 or 88 not much it was under a buck for one of these little bottles these are only two ounces this is uh what is this this is four ounces so this is twice the size of this one and it was like eight dollars seven eight bucks is what this thing cost and i guarantee you it's got a basically about the same amount of pigment in it as one of these small ones does it's just got twice as much water because it's it takes multiple coats to use this stuff so I haven't been real I mean Woodland Scenics I like you guys I like I like a lot of your products but this one not overly overwhelmed with probably gonna end up just getting this color mixed up I've also got just a regular concrete color uh, ST1454 this one is C1217 this is an aged concrete this is new concrete I haven't had time to use this one much yet I'm gonna assume it's probably the same so um, I'll probably just end up getting a color mixed up that matches this color that's a, a little bit thicker because you know I don't really feel like uh, seven eight bucks for a paint that I need to put on seven or eight coats to get coverage is uh, really worth my time because that's more time that I have to spend building these things and as you guys know I build these things to you know not for me I build them for other people and I build them to sell and time is money and I'm sure your time is money too so Woodland Scenics thicken this stuff up you need to call up uh, oh guys I think her name is Janet or somebody at Deco Art and I bet you they can make you this paint in this color a whole lot cheaper and a better quality so not happy with that so anyway I'm gonna let this dry Paint this up, may come back and do these, then we'll do the stones on the side and the front and things along that before I got on a tangent and a couple other little things. And I'm gonna probably gonna clean this piece of plexiglass. This is 
people to use different things. I've been using this piece of plexiglass for ever, but it needs cleaning. And I'm going to do that. And we'll get back with you in just a little bit, okay? Talk to you, let's talk to you then. Hey folks, we're back. And uh, I've gone ahead and I've painted these windows up. And I've put a little bit of black, uh, like mold or wear or whatever around them with the brush. Uh, did it a little bit here and a little bit here. And all it is took is just a little bit of watered down, really watered down black and just barely touched it on the brick and let it kind of go out on its own. I may. Uh, weaken some of that down just a little bit uh, before it's all said and done. I've gone ahead and painted these windows up here and what I do on these is I'll paint them uh, paint them earth brown then I will go over them with a dry brush uh, with sable brown actually Mississippi mud then sable brown then misty beige and then gray uh, these are some older colors. You can't uh, buy this brand anymore, but you can find comparable colors. It doesn't really have to be these particular colors. I mean, just any sort of uh, progression of, of lighter colors. It gives you a little bit of color depth and things like that. And I may I may work on these a little bit more. I kind of did them quick. But I'm, I haven't done these here yet, and I'm going to show you what I do on those real fast, um, just to give you an idea. If you don't know what dry brushing is, and probably a lot of you do, but um, dry brushing is where you take a take a take a flat brush like this, one that's got kind of got some stiff stiff bristles on it. And you put it in the paint, and then you get most move this out of the way. Get most of the paint out of the brush. And it helps if I can see what I'm doing. And then you're just going to drag it lightly across the surface just to get a little bit of that paint on there and kind of bring out the highlights of the other uh, other spots also before I after I put the the brown on the first brown the, the earth brown I'll do a black wash on here um, and kind of give those uh, recessed areas a little bit uh, more darkness. I don't think I've done it on this one, so I'm going to have to go back and do that, and then retouch up these browns. And I'll put the, I'll put that on there, and then get another color that's just a, a hair lighter. Actually, I think I'm going backwards here. I'll just skip that one. I don't worry about cleaning the brush up between them because you get most of the paint out when you're doing this. And like I said, you want to get most of the most of the paint out of the brush where you don't have hardly any left in there. Because believe it or not, you got a lot more paint left. You got a lot more paint left in the brush than you think. And I got a little piece of something on there. And you just sort of drag it real light, get it along the edges, the bottom. And if you have to come back and touch up the brick or the concrete areas, that's easy enough to do. And then just to give it a little more of an aged look like it's been there a while because if you know wood that's been out in the weather for a while uh, gets a bit gray looking. You get a lot of that. You want a lot of the gray out because it's going to be a little stronger. And uh, kind of drag it on the top of these. And it gives it a bit of a wooden look with a little gray. And I'm going to go back and put a black wash on this. I've gone ahead and painted these um, earth brown also. And I want to go, we're going to do essentially the same technique, uh, maybe with a, with a few more colors. I'm going to put another coat on this because it didn't really get the good coverage I want. Then I'm going to come back and put a black wash. I'm going to go ahead and finish this one. Then I'll come back and show you this one. And uh, we'll be back when I'm ready to do that. And show you how to do it. I went ahead and got these painted up on the side here. I think I showed you that. And now I'm going to go ahead and work on these bricks. I've done this side here and you can see that. It really didn't take all that long. I'll just kind of give you a quick uh, demo 
of how to do this. Some of you may know and some of you might not. So what I've done is, like I said earlier, I went ahead and painted this uh, brown. And then when you take black, and all you're going to do is just water it down, get you some black, and find the right brush that you want. I use something like something like that, just a, something soft. Put a little water down. I'm just see that I'm just making a making a puddle of some watered down black paint and then I just come over here and I just fill all this in and then when I get all this in I'll let this dry and I'm not going to sit here and have you watch paint dry because I'm probably going to end up putting two or three two or three coats of black in here and then I will go back and we'll highlight all the stone on the side and you can do these in gray or you know vari uh, variations of gray whatever color you like I mean around here where I'm at we have a lot of sandstone so they kind of come in variations of brown and uh, so that's what I do and what I use and I'll just give you a kind of a, a, hit, a heads up I'll just use brown as the base I'll come back over it, I'll dry brush some one color brown, I'll just basically like the wood, another one, another one, and uh, maybe even a little bit of bone white to give it some highlights, and um, highlight, you know, dry brush all of these and, that, and, and on that, but the main thing on this is when you come back later after you've done all your dry brushing, and I need to clean that up, done all your dry brushing, you want to come back and sort of highlight some of the stones with just a little bit of a, you know, almost a full full strength paint, just just barely barely touch them up. And and the important thing on it is don't believe it or not, don't pay attention to where you're putting it. Just kind of go through here and just do stone 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 wherever you want it at because that gives you more of a random pattern. If you sort of focus on, you know, one here, one here, one here, you start to look like a checkerboard or it looks like polka dots. But I don't, when I put when I highlight them, I don't put any pay any attention at all so let me let this paint dry and clean up this little bit around here where it's kind of bled over where I've moved it around and uh, let it come out onto the brick but I'm going to weather all of that at the bottom anyway like you get splash up so I'm not too worried about it but let, I'll let this dry clean this up and then we'll do the then we'll do the stones okay well we've got this all painted up with black that sun is coming through those windows hard so I've got the blind shut but it's still it's great when you're trying to work without trying to film but when you're trying to film it's sort of a nuisance so I apologize for that but hey it's better to have sunshine than none at all because I got three huge windows right here in front of me which lets a lot of light in okay well what I've done is I went ahead and I put about four coats of a uh, a black wash on here to get to get down in this and give this depth and then I went back <coughs> and sort of did a, a, a wet coat of the uh, of the brown on top and what I mean by a wet coat is it's not really a dry brush technique it's it's more it's it, you got a lot more paint in your brush but instead of trying to you know paint it get down to the cracks you sort of drag it across like that and, and bring that detail of those bricks back out because what we're trying to achieve here is a uh, definition and detail and bring out some of the little more uh, minute uh, details what I've gone ahead and done on the front of this one I don't know if you can oh, sorry about all those lines there with the with this I got the blind shut but it ain't working too well what I've gone ahead and done with this one is I went ahead and added a little bit of terracotta to the front of this on these stones because terracotta is an orange color orange and brown are complementary colors uh, that's why they use them at Thanksgiving but um, so they're complementary colors they work together and it brings out a little bit more detail a little bit more color to go ahead and do that so what we're going to do on this side right here and I'm trying to get this position to where you can see what I'm doing and I can see what I'm doing and everybody knows what we're doing I'm going to get a little bit of a this is called Mississippi mud this is an old ceramicrone color but I believe um, Deco Art, who makes Americana and, and several other uh, brands, uh, makes that same color also. Still, still makes it. I'm just going to go ahead and load up my brush and 
then unload my brush. Some people do this on a paper towel. I just do it on my little makeshift palette here because I try to wash this thing off occasionally, but as you can tell, it's not occasionally enough. And then we're just going to go ahead and drag this across. And I'm not really too concerned about how much, you know, if I get good coverage on every, every single stone or not, because you don't really want that. You want it randomized, um, just like rocks and natures are randomized. They don't have a, a set color. I'll go ahead and do this back side. Not to worry about it. You can see I went ahead and got that paint and stuff off of there, most of it anyhow. I'm gonna put a lot of gonna put some of it back later because you're gonna to want to have that dirt at the bottom where mud and debris and stuff splat and people put their hands and put their feet. And anytime you put paint on wet, and it's not as bad as dry brush it is with wet brushing, uh, especially these um, craft paints, they're gonna dry out a lot lighter than uh, what they go on wet. So when you see them when they're on their wet and they start to dry, they dry. That's why when you do the black on the inside, you're gonna need four or five coats probably. Then I'm gonna get another color here. This one is a uh, sable brown. I'm not sure what the modern, uh, what another equivalent of that would be, but it's just a. You see that? Just a, get that in the Just a kind of a light brown. It's sort of the color of sable. And then again, just sort of randomized and change the direction of your brush if you want to. I mean, I do because it's just, it's actually got a little bit too much paint in it. Um, it's no biggie. It's all easy to fix. Anything you don't like, it's just remember it's paint. You painted it on there, you can paint over it. You can fix it. You can start to see we got a little more of a of a stone look there. This doesn't really take a long time to do. I'm going to go ahead and use some misty beige, which is just a uh, a real light brown. I think in the old days, before everybody got all PC and stuff, we call this flesh tone. But uh, not just. Just these lighter colors, just even less, and you know, less. Just, just a little, just a little highlight here and there. And sometimes I like to take my finger across it and kind of smooth it out, get rid of the any sort of brush strokes that I might have. Give it some highlights. Your fingers are a great brush. Never be afraid to use them. That's why just about every piece of clothing I own's got paint on it, where I wipe my hands off on them. Wife not that impressed with that little bit of trivia there. And I'm trying to do this a little quicker than I normally would so we don't waste a lot of your time. I'm going to go ahead and do this one and I'm going to call probably call this about the end of the video. I may go ahead and do this front. This we're going to do basically the same way. I'm going to paint a base color on it, then I'm going to dry brush over it, highlight it, bring the detail out, then maybe just give it a little bit, a little bit, because most of this is going to be covered up anyway when I get done because this is probably going to be. Um, my, I don't know. I may make this a bar. I may make this a, a cafe or this a cafe and this a bar. And it's probably going to have decals over it, so I'm not real worried about uh, what it gets on the, on there. But we'll do it. It's, like I say, same same technique. You're just going to bring it out and then, you know, just sort of touch, you know, just a little bit here. Not not much on this on this orange. You just want to. It's not really an orange. It's terracotta, but you know. And this is going to look a little darker right now, but as it dries. So you can see on the front, it dries a little bit lighter than it does on the side. And when you get done with this, because you still got a lot of little details, a lot of little groove lines and things on these on these uh, stones that you probably filled up with paint just a little bit, and you just, you know just keep playing with it and looking at it. And I'm gonna I'll put a another final uh, black wash on top of this to to bring out some of the, some more of that detail again. And to give it a little bit more, a uh, little bit more depth. And if, like I say, anything you don't like, paint over it. But I just keep sort of playing with it, looking at it, and you know, kind of look at it at a distance. Say, yeah, yeah, that looks like a stone wall. And that looks that looks pretty good. That looks pretty decent. There's a couple of things I could do. A little more black in there. 
and like I say, I'll probably do this. And if it looks like there's something you need to know on that, we'll start rolling. But I don't think that's going to be necessary because I think you get the idea with the stone. Same technique. Paint it solid. Drag the brush across. See, you still got a little, little paint in there. Drag the brush across and bring out the detail on those. If you can see. Gosh, that sun's bright. And bring out the... Bring out the detail. Bring out the details on those. Just got to figure out what color I want to go with first. Um, but that's kind of it for that. And.